We are back here now on the show to talk about the Jacksonville Jaguars some more. I've been pretty critical of them, but it could be looking more promising for them heading into 2024 and by a unfamiliar source, an unfamiliar hero that could step in for the Jaguars this year. That would be second-year running back Tank Bigsby. Last year, it was a struggle for Tank Bigsby. If you guys are unfamiliar with him, he was uh, a draft pick last year by the Jacksonville Jaguars, and a lot of teams are switching over to this running back by committee, or at least a running back duo, um, to really get the best out of it. You see a lot of teams doing it now. Um, the Rams are doing it, the Steelers are doing it, the Ravens, um, having two running backs there to really emphasize this running game, to have a more balanced look. The Jaguars tried to do it last year, but it didn't really work out like I mentioned. Uh, Tank Bigsby only was limited to 50 carries, 132 yards, and only had two touchdowns in 2023, and to pile onto that, he fell into more of a reduced role in the second half of the year. And that's where the problems really started to um, arise for this Jacksonville Jaguars team. Because once Tank Bigsby's role started to decrease as we headed later into the year, ETN obviously had to play more because of that, and he ended up getting hurt. And not only did he get hurt, but once he did get hurt, the offense really lost its identity, lost its North Star, if you would, um, and just didn't look the same after that without having a very reliable running game. Uh, over, an over-dependence on ETN led to him getting hurt, and it just didn't look the same, really, from that point on. And because of that, head coach Doug Peterson has used that season now into this year as motivation and has stressed um, to avoid a repeat of last year, to avoid Travis ETN just getting hurt um, year in and year out. They need to get more out of Tank Bigsby in his second year going forward to get you know more production out of Travis ETN. It means less wear and tear on the body of uh, Travis Etienne as well. You get more production if Tank Bigsby can take that second year leap and give you a little bit more than just um, a buck 32, 50 carries and two touchdowns. Um, but why did Tank Bigsby struggle? You know, other than being a rookie and getting acclimated to everything, running backs coach Jerry Mack believed that the rookies, you know, early struggles through getting accustomed to everything, training camp. Um, just a longer season in general than he's ever had in his football career. Um, he believed that his confidence was hurt early on, and then from then, it was tough to really regain it back with how fast the NFL season goes and just how um, intense everything is. It never really picked up for Tank Bigsby in his first year, and really the Jaguars were just moving so fast that he, not that he just couldn't keep up or wasn't capable of keeping up, but um, it's hard to regain that confidence when the team is so successful going forward and if you're not playing a big role in that the team's really not going to change anything obviously if it's if it's not broken don't fix it they're going to keep rolling with it but they don't foresee an injury coming obviously and then once you get later into the year um your running back gets hurt and now you don't have a backup plan because he hasn't been part of the main focus of this offensive scheme the entire year so it never really all worked out for um, Tank Bigs being his first year, but now uh, running backs coach Jerry Mack also emphasized that this year um, he has seen a revitalized type of attitude in his words from Tank Bigsby, and he anticipates him stepping into that role because he understands the offense a little bit more. Um, Jerry Mack, the running backs coach, said a little bit more in depth that um, just a refocus. I think he understood last year. Being new to the NFL, everything was extremely fast for him. I think now things are going, things are starting to slow down for him. He understands his role in this offense. He he's understanding the ins and outs of this offense a lot better as well. And on top of the running game that you want to have, obviously to make it a bit more balanced, which is going to be huge for the Jaguars. They've done a pretty decent job of. Um, replenishing the passing offense and getting back some talent after losing Calvin Ridley. You already had Christian Kirk in there. You already had Evan Ingram. And Calvin Ridley was the the star player, you know, the star wide receiver, the bona fide number one wide receiver that all contending teams need. But once you move on from him, I thought they did a good job at least of bringing in Gabe Davis. 
drafting Brian Thomas Jr., but there is still a little bit uncertainty there, but at least they just didn't sit on their hands and do nothing. So I like that they did something there, but the running game is really what needs to change of this team uh, just going forward. Because if you look at their production last year, um, they finished 23rd in the NFL in yards, in rushing yards, at 1,646, only averaging 96.8 yards per game, which if you're not over 100, I really don't um, consider this offense to be a championship contending level offense because you need the running game to be better than that. Uh, you just do in this day and age. Uh, with everybody being good at passing, with everybody having all these passing weapons, you have to find something to difference you from the group. And the running game, if you have two very reliable backs, I think that could really be it for a lot of teams. But the Jaguars weren't in that conversation at all. And uh, like I mentioned, once they had the total, I mentioned the total was 1,646. Travis Etienne recorded 1,008 yards for that rushing attack in 2023. So that means the rest was left to two guys, Trevor Lawrence and Tank Bigsby, really, as the next two leading rushers. Um, but Tank Bigsby is the running back, and the next leading rusher in that attack was Trevor Lawrence, and that just can't be the case um, for the Jacksonville Jaguars. If you look at it here, um, I actually have it on here to show you guys. Um, Travis Etienne clearly, far and away, was the leading rusher, was over-relied upon um, to carry this rushing attack to at least produce something to give the Jaguars, at least another dynamic of this offense. 11 touchdowns for him, 267 carries as well, and over 1,000 yards like I mentioned. But your next leading rusher, if you're a really, if you're at least a decent team in the running attack, you have the next leading rusher be at about 500 yards at least, maybe 600, um, 700 or something like that. Um, but the next leading rusher, only had 339 yards, and it was your quarterback. Like, um, that that just can't be the case um, if you really want to be considered legitimate contenders. 70 carries, too, for Trevor Lawrence as well. Um, 250 carries for Tank Bigsby and 132 yards for Tank Bigsby as well. It's just backwards. Like, those numbers should be at least the other way around. And not only that, like I mentioned, they should be at at least 500 um, to be considered average in this day and age. But... Um, because Trevor Lawrence also was running the ball so much, like you see there with 70 carries, he ended up getting hurt, and then really their playoff chances took a hit after that. So that's the one area of the Jacksonville Jaguars where um, <clears throat> I do understand that there might not be a number one wide receiver really at this point. Um, if you consider Christian Kirk a number one or um, Gabe Davis a number one, I don't really, but maybe some people do. I think having a rusher, hopefully in Tank Bigsby, that can give you 500, 700 yards, 600 yards or something like that on 70 carries or, or uh, numbers similar to that, produce four to five touchdowns. It would make this team look a lot different, I believe. And that way, you can have Travis Etienne for the entirety of the regular season because he hasn't really shown that he is injury prone or anything like that. He did suffer that injury last year, but other than that, it hasn't been too bad for him. He's already produced a thousand yard season and it doesn't look like he has reached a ceiling or anything like that. Travis could definitely get better and he can only really do that. I think he could only really unlock that um, if you have another guy supporting him and hopefully Tank Bigsby takes that second leap now heading into uh, 2024. And if he does that without a number one wide receiver, like I mentioned, I think it would take off a little bit more pressure on Trevor Lawrence if they have two monsters in the backfield because now you don't really have to pass too often if your guys aren't getting open or if they're um, taking a little bit longer to get acclimated to this offense or get acclimated um, to just being that number one guy. You have two reliable backs back there that you can hand the ball off to continuously, give one guy a break, bring the other guy in, and that way um, the defense is left guessing a little bit more and you don't have to put too much pressure on Gabe Davis, Christian Kirk, or um, Evan Ingram, or even Brian Thomas, because they've never really been the number one wide receivers on a team, other than Christian Kirk, I guess, maybe in Arizona for some time. But even though, even then, 
Gabe Davis hasn't really been that number one target. Evan Ingram, not really either uh, with his time with the Giants or the Jaguars. So I think overall, it seems like a lot of pressure on Tank Bigsby to, to just be good. And that way the Jaguars will be better. But um, I do understand he's young. I do understand that he's coming off of a pretty um, down year as a rookie. Um, it could be, you could say it could be as expected, but the Jaguars have a lot of confidence in him. They've seen a change in him this year that could be positive for them going forward if they're able to get the best out of him, hopefully keep him healthy as well throughout the entirety of 2024. And if they could do that, I'd like the Jaguars' chances a little bit more. I've put, I've been one of the people that have put a lot of pressure on them or have said that there is some more pressure on them now, but if they're able to take off some of that off of Trevor's shoulders with being one of the highest paid quarterbacks, not having to go out there and prove it, just win games through the running game, I think it'll be a massive um, weight off of his shoulders. And the Jaguars could look a little bit more well-balanced and maybe um, not give up leads, not give up um, you know, losing streaks towards the end of the year if their running attack is reliable throughout the entirety of the season. That's where I see it projecting Tank Bigsby's numbers, um, it's hard to say right now, but I, it's hard to play worse, honestly. So hopefully they give him the ball a little bit more, and he's a big factor going forward for the Jaguars there. But that'll be all on that segment. We're going to head into our next break of the show. Two more topics to talk about on today's episode. One in regards to the Houston Texans. They made a lot of additions this year, but which one was the most significant? I have two. Daniel Hunter or Stefan Diggs? Two experienced players, two players that are expected to contribute right away. Which one of them was the more significant addition to this team? And also, the other segment will be talking about Dak Prescott addressing being seen in a walking boot. What did he say about having a potential injury? Is it something or is it nothing? Are too, are too many people reading into it? All of that is coming up in just a few seconds. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 